Hi folks, thanks once again for joining me. And uh, I want to have you to open to Colossians chapter 3. And uh, also put a mark in Romans chapter 8. I'm going to be in both of those chapters today. I want you to look at uh, Colossians chapter 3 and have a mark in Romans chapter 8. While you're finding those and marking those places, I'm going to go ahead and start us in a word of prayer. Father, I just uh, thank you once again for uh, another opportunity to make a video and uh, get a message out there that I believe that you've given to me, and I pray that it would be a blessing to those that are watching. Uh, Lord, that you would uh, speak to hearts, change hearts, change my heart, or change me more into your image, as uh, we're going to talk about today, and uh, do your work in my life and through me uh, according to your will. And, and, and I pray that the, those watching would have that same blessing in their own hearts and lives. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 and Romans chapter 8. Uh, hopefully you have a marker there in Romans chapter 8. And have your Bibles open to Rome, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And in Colossians chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 10 through 15. Uh, it says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. The title of my message is, Who is the New Man? Who is the New Man? In Colossians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul is speaking to Christians. He's speaking to born-again believers. At the beginning of the chapter, prior to the segment that I just read, uh, we're, we're looking at believers. At the beginning of the chapter, uh, we, he's reminding them of some of the things that I have spoken of in previous videos. The people he's speaking to uh, at the Colossian church are, are true believers. Uh, they've surrendered self and sin and identified themselves with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Paul is challenging them. He's telling them, uh, if you are truly risen with Christ... Your affections, your desires should all be on the things that are above, uh, in heaven, with him, on things that are eternal. He's saying, uh, if you're truly saved, you're dead. Christ is living in you and through you. Therefore, all those things you used to do should be dead too. Fornication, uncleanness, idolatry, and the like. Then in verses 8 and 9, he adds to that. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Which brings us to the beginning of our text for today, where Paul says, Christian, uh, if you are really what you say you are, then you're dead. Jesus is alive in you. You've put off the old man. Verse 10 says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. What is this new man? And what does it look like? We know he must be in contrast to the things that Paul just told us are traits of the old man. But who is the new man? Unlike the old man, the new man is renewed in his intellect. He's a reflection of God's image. And he's rejected his own identity. Let's look more closely at those three traits. First of all, the new man is renewed in his intellect. Back in verse 10 of Colossians chapter 3, it says, renewed in knowledge, renewed in knowledge. There's a change that's happened in the mind of one who has transitioned from the old man into the new man. In Romans, if you flip over, keep your uh, hand or finger there in uh, Colossians chapter 3, but flip over to Romans chapter 8 where I had you mark a place. And we're going to look at 6 and 7, verses 6 and 7, Romans chapter 8. Okay, and it says at the beginning of chapter 8, verse 6, 
It says, for to be carnally minded is death. The carnal mind is the old mind of the old man who still lives in the old ways. He's controlled by self, by his own emotions, by his own desires, uh, by his will. Paul says that frame of mind only brings death. In verse 6, it continues, But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see, the spiritual mind is the mind of the new man. It's not led by self-will, but according to God's will. A consistently spiritual mind is one that is concerned with spiritual things, the things of God, the things that are in agreement with His Word. It's a mind that is at peace because it's a mind that knows it has eternal life. The, the, the cares of this life are not as important to those of the next. Back in Romans chapter 8, verse 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. See, the old mind, the old man, the old ways are enemies of God. They're not concerned about his law, as laid out in his word. Uh, they aren't concerned with eternal things or spiritual things. The believer may go back to the ways of the old man from time to time, but a true believer cannot remain there long because it goes against his new nature, his new man. In Romans chapter 12, you're in Romans 8 right now. If you flip over a couple of pages to the right, in Romans chapter 12, the first two verses, we're going to look at those quick. Paul is pleading with Christians here not to entertain the old man. He says in verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Who I am inside and out is a sacrifice. It's an offering to God. That's my reasonable service, meaning it's the least that I could do. In verse 2 of Romans chapter 12, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, the new man is removed from the old man. Uh, he's not conformed to the world. Because the world represents the old man, the old stuff that he's forsaken. He may wander back there at times, but if he truly is a new man, he will return to the old ways less and less as he is transformed by the renewing of his mind through Bible study and prayer, meditation on the scriptures, memorizing them and, and, and internalizing all of that. And that is the mind of God. The new man is renewed in his intellect. So much so that he is, number two, a reflection of God's image. A reflection of God's image. If you can go back to Colossians chapter 3 and look at verse 10 real quick. Once again in verse 10, continuing in verse 10, after the image of him that created him. Back in Romans 8, where we were a few minutes ago, verse 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. The image of God and the image of his Son are interchangeable because the image of the Son is the image of God. The new man is predestinated by God to be conformed to the image of Christ. It's a process. As he puts off the old ways of the old man and puts on uh, the new ways of the new man, as he studies and prays and memorizes and meditates and lives the life of a new man, a new creature in Christ, his own stuff is surrendered more and more. His old mind is yielded more and more as he, uh, 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 to a transformation into a renewed mind that loves God and seeks to live like Jesus. It's like when you see uh, couples or close friends they're always together, always walking together, always doing things together. The longer they're together, the more they do together and the more they enjoy each other's company. 
The more time they spend together, the more they take on each other's interests and character traits. Before long, you see uh, they're seen together so much that they're and they're so much alike. Uh, they even seem to look alike. That's the way it is with the new man, who who is so close to Jesus. It's only only Jesus doesn't change. So as the new man spends more and more time. Uh, and energy invested in Jesus, loving Jesus, walking with Jesus. He takes on the character of Jesus, and he begins to look more and more like Jesus. As time goes on, the new man becomes so renewed in his intellect, he becomes such a keen reflection of God's image, that number three, he's rejected his own identity. Rejected his own identity. Back in Colossians chapter 3, once again, we're going to look at uh, verses 11 through 15 now. Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. In verse 11, we see Christ on the inside. It says, Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. If you've put on the new man, then Christ is in you. He is your identity, your ancestry, your ethnicity, your culture, your nationality. They matter not in Christ. Uh, He lives through you. You are his. He is yours. And everyone else that is his is your family, regardless of any outward consideration. Everyone who is part of the family of God, his or her identity is in Christ, and he or she is has Christ on the inside. But he or she will also have Christ on the outside. Verses 12 through 14. Verse 12 says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. If your identity is in Christ, you have Christ on the inside. And Christ will show on the outside. You will be known for your mercy, for your kindness, for your humility, and your patience. You'll also be known as one who forgives and doesn't hold grudges. In verse 13, it says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Verse 14, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of of perfectness. Charity here is the Bible word for unconditional love. Christ on the inside shows on the outside more than anything else as an attitude of love. And now, and and how will you know uh, that you have Christ in you? He shines on the outside in all the ways that I mentioned. And Colossians 3.15 is the result. Christ is all means peace. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. You'll have peace. Christ is all means unity. It says, to to the which also ye are called in one body. There's unity. And, And Christ is all also means thankfulness. It says, and be ye thankful. These will be the results of all the things that I talked about, of having Christ in you and showing on the outside. Do you recognize these things in yourself? Can you, can you see Jesus in you? Uh, can others see Christ on the outside? Do you have the new man? Or are you still living with the old man? Are you renewed in your intellect? A reflection of God's image? Or at least finding yourself making progress in these things? Have you rejected your own identity and taken on Christ as your new identity? If you can't say that you've done that with a certainty, I want to help you. Connect with me, John, at johnclawton.org or through my website, johnclawton.org. Thank you for watching today. And please, if you need hope or help or prayer or, or, or anything that, that I may be able to help you with, reach out to me, John at johncloughton.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.